Digital evangelism is really easy. Please remember to like, comment and share this video. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. All these things give us favour with the YouTube algorithm and help our content to be seen by more people. God bless. And when we come to understand the definitions of peace and that God is peace and if we are his children are supposed to be demonstrated and reflecting his virtues, then we have to start to question ourselves and say, are we peaceful Christians? I was speaking at a church the other day and I said, the biggest pandemic affecting church is not COVID. It's, it's a lack of peaceful Christians because what I discern and what I see in a lot of our churches is unresolved issues and a lack of harmony. And we, are, we, we will say that we are believers. We will say we are people of God. But if God is peace and we are here to demonstrate his perfections to this world, why do we have so much unresolved issues? Now, there's many angles we can go at this with. Let's deal with us personally first. Sometimes in our own individual lives, we have unresolved issues. And these unresolved issues become gateways into our lives where the enemy can just run in and out of them might be trauma it might be things that have happened to us it might be abuses but these unresolved issues need to be resolved and the part of our christian journey is god trying to resolve these personal issues because god doesn't lack anything and because he is whole he wants us to be whole and if we are going to help people we have to be whole because what will happen is we will try to help someone and something that that, that, that is happening with them will trigger us and then we will go back into a state of um, disharmony or a state of war or a state of, of anguish, which is not where God wants us to be. So that's why sometimes before God transitions you, he just puts you up against certain things that are gonna be rough and they're gonna, they're gonna challenge you, but what they're gonna do is resolve some issues and bring about peace in your life. Let's take this from another angle. In our culture, we don't like to resolve issues. We put things under the carpet that has seeped into our churches. So we have decades and decades of sometimes ministerial discord, but they don't resolve their issues. They keep going and they keep serving and they keep ministering. And that seeps down into the congregation because if the head is sick, the whole body is sick. And we have a sick church right now because we have a lot of ministries and ministers who have unresolved issues. They've swept them under the carpet. People have died and gone on and things have been handed down and it's not good. And as I said before, this is a season where I believe God wants to heal and bring healing to deep hurts and traumas, but we can't bring no one in the church and we don't have peace. We need to be whole. You can't bring the jugs drugs man and the ex-prostitute and all of these people who are full of their life is full of abuses and hurts and we have not got over it ourselves god is god is not god is not trying to keep us in a state of um of anguish and pain where the devil can just keep running into our lives through the the the, the, the gateways of trauma that he created this is why there are certain seasons that are just difficult because like I said, God never allows you to skip a test. You are not going to graduate unless you pass certain tests and we need to be peaceful. We need to be whole. Too much unresolved conflict in the body of Christ, much less outside and with family, right? I have personally witnessed when ministers have not resolved conflict and issues and then they've tried to serve together and it's and, and god does not honor that because god is plenteous in mercy and slow in anger so you let your church go on for 10 20 years and then boom generation just go why do you think there's no youth in the church why do you think everything is happening like this god has been merciful but now he's like no more i'm building my end time church and you ain't coming around with this with this nonsense no more i'm not gonna let it go on no more resolve your issues like i said there's so many angles we can take this but let's look at ourselves personally. Do we have unresolved issues with family members? We need to deal with it. Do we have unresolved issues with our, our church family? We need to deal with it. And we'll deal with peace and forgiveness later on. And there's a scripture that says, confess your faults. And we, 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 we just take that to mean um, confess your sin. If you've sinned, you know, go and confess to your brother. It means universally confessing. It means if I have 
past my place with you, if I have disrespected you, if I have dishonored you, if I have hurt you, I need to confess. And we need to come together and pray that we might be healed. Because God cannot honor falseness. He can't honor false worship or false relationships. I was doing a study the other day when we were talking about um, how does God want to be served? And if you look in the Old Testament, one of the things that he admonishes the, the Israel for is false worship. You can't be in false relationship in the body. He's not into it. He's not into it. That's why some of our churches can't get revival because God is not into the fakeness. You can perform all day and jump up and down and have enough noise, but there's no revival. Why? Because you're fake. Because you haven't resolved your issues and God is not going to honor that. Revival comes when there is a perfection in unity. Look at Israel. When, they, when the, the, the first temple was built, they was, they was united in, 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 in one tribe. It was just one people. And when the second um, temple is built, they're united in Judah. When Pentecost comes, they're in unity. And if you, any of your churches have, have been birthed in revival, you know that there was a unity there. God is not going to revive us in this unity and in this falsehood, right? So like I said, many ways we can, we can deal with this peace issue, but let's take it on a personal level. We need to resolve our internal conflict and our external conflict. There is no conflict in Jesus. His ways are not contradictory, perfectly harmonious. There's no war. Jesus Christ is not at war with himself, right so we need to understand that jesus represented that balance that we need to we need to have in our life 